Hey guys, I uh, decided to make this video to help you out with locating the epicenter. So you'll see two pages in front of you. You will need the one on the left and the one on the right in order to complete this lab. Um, like I said, I wanted to post this for those of you who will be missing class um, this Wednesday or later on in the week. Um, so hopefully this helps a little bit. So obviously this one right here is your SP time travel curve. You've seen this one before. We've done a lot of practice with it, but this one will give you more practice with it which I think will definitely pay off in the long run. And we went over a couple examples of this in class today, but I want to go over the one, specifically the ones on the back. The only difference between the ones on the back and the ones on the front is that here, these numbers, they actually give you numbers which tell you when the P wave arrived and the S wave arrived. The ones on the back, however, they don't give you the numbers. You have to figure them out yourself based on when the P wave arrives and when the S waves arrives. So the only difference is, you know, you basically just have to trace down and figure out what number it is. And we'll do one of those right now. So if you take a look at, this is the one in the back, map number three, it's called Asia. If you look on the back, we're going to do seismic station B, which is this middle one. And it looks somewhat like this. So if you remember on the sheet that we went over in class today, I redid them. These ones are P wave arrival time, if you can't read them, S wave arrival time, lag time, epicenter distance, P wave travel time, S wave travel time, and origin time. If you can figure out these two right here, if you can figure out both of these, you can figure out everything on here. But if you get these two wrong, your entire answer will be wrong. So this is something you really need to pay attention to because it will be on your test. So for instance, if you take your P wave arrival time, we don't know it, but if you zoom in a little closer on this, you'll notice that your P wave is right here. That's, those are the first waves that arrive on a seismogram. So this is a P wave. If you trace it down, it's pretty close to 904.00. So it's 904 either in the morning or at night, we don't know. So your P wave of arrival time would be 904.00. So you put that in. That's at 904 in the morning or at night, we're not sure. If you go to your S wave arrival time or when your S wave got there, obviously your P waves are closer so you want to, you know, your P waves are much faster, so they're going to get there quicker. So if you trace it back over, your S waves are a little bit slower. Finally, your S wave appears here. If you trace it down, it crosses right here at this part right there. This is 910. This is 911. How many spaces are in between? One, two, three. So if you look at those, there are three spaces. Between here and here is one minute. So 60 seconds divided by three, which means each of these goes by... 20 seconds. So knowing that they go by 20 seconds, these should be pretty easy to figure out. This is your S wave, just trace it down. You have 40 seconds, so this is 9, 10, 40. So when you go back to here, all you do is you type in 9, 10, 40. What you just figured out right here is the exact same thing that was on the front of it. You figured out the times, they gave you the times. You just figured them out using logic um, and a seismogram. So what you have there are the times, if you want to figure out your lag time, and if you remember, lag time is just the difference between the, when the P wave arrives and when the S wave arrives. So lag time, if you drew a P wave, you know, there's your earthquake, that would be your P wave, your S waves would be a little bit bigger. So the difference between, I'll use a red marker so you can see it a little bit better. The difference between here and here, that distance, is what's called your lag time. Basically what that means is your P wave appears, your S wave is here. The amount of time between the P and the S waves tells you how far that earthquake is. It basically tells you P wave arrived at you know so and so a time. In this case, it arrived at 904, and the S wave arrived at 910. When you take the difference between those, that tells you what your lag time is. So we'll go ahead and do that. So your S wave always goes on top. Your bigger number always goes on top. Treat it like a numerator denominator kind of thing. So if you have 91040, which is your S wave right here. If you subtract 904.00 from it, you can easily take 0 from 40. That's very easy. Obviously, you get 40. If you do 4 minus 10, uh, 4 from 10, you end up getting a 6. Trace down the 0. 9 minus 9 is 0. So your lag time, or the difference between your S wave and your P wave, is now 6 minutes and 40 seconds. So we can go ahead and fill this in right here. 640. With this, you can take that lag time and you can actually figure out how far away your epicenter distance is. To do that, 
All you need to do is take this sheet. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So now we know we have the time. It's 6 minutes and 40 seconds. What you do is use this chart. These are all minutes on the side, and it's labeled right here, travel time in minutes. So you know you're given minutes. So what you need to do is, just like topographic maps, you're going to want to mark where zero is. And you can label it zero, that's fine. Mark where six minutes and 40 seconds are, because remember, that's what you have for your lag time. So if you could put that back underneath, mark where zero is, mark where six minutes and 40 seconds are. It should be right about here, because if you trace it over, crosses right there. Each one of these goes by 20 seconds if you remember. So this would be 6 minutes, 6 minutes, 20 seconds, 6 minutes and 40 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and label that so it's a little easier. And I will also label this in red so you know exactly what I'm doing. So these two I will label them red so they stand out a little bit more. If you want to figure out epicenter distance, all you need to do is trace it up to where they meet. You remember doing this in class. Let's trace it up to where they meet and they cross right about there. So if you trace that down, remember keep them parallel, trace it down, I'm gonna cross right around here. Remove the paper, you're now at 5,000, 5,200. If you remember, these go by 200 each. So your answer would be 5,200 or 5,200 kilometers. So when we go back to this sheet, you eventually have 5,200 kilometers. And that would be it. If you want to figure out your P wave travel time or how long it took for your P wave to get there, it's the same thing. You go right back to the sheet. Your P wave is this one right here, hence it's labeled P. If you go back up to this one, it's labeled S. Those are your P and S waves. So if you have 5,200 kilometers and you trace it all the way up until it meets the P line, then what you're going to want to do is trace it all the way over. This one falls right here. Right on this line. See how I went up and how I went over? So this one falls right here at 8 minutes and 20 seconds, 8 minutes and 40 seconds. What that means is it took 8 minutes and 40 seconds from when the earthquake occurred. It took 8 minutes and 40 seconds for that P wave to finally hit and start making the squiggles. So if you go back to your sheet, all you have to do is write in 8, 40, and you're done with that one. If you want to figure out your S wave travel time, it's the exact same thing. Find 5200, which is your epicenter distance, which remember you figured out due to your lag time. Trace it all the way up to the S wave. You end up crossing right here. And I'm going to make a, a red dot so you know where it is. So that's where it crosses. If you want to figure out how long it took to get there, trace it over. Eventually you have 15 minutes and 20 seconds because it falls right there. So now your answer would be 15 minutes and 20 seconds. Pretty simple. So the only thing left that we have to do is figure out your origin time. The easiest way to figure origin time is, I'll get a separate sheet of paper so we can do this. This is the formula for it. You can either take your P and the P waves or the S and the S waves. So you can take your P wave arrival time or when it got there, which you should already know because it's right here on the chart, the one you just figured out based on the above data. So take your arrival time. If you subtract your P wave travel time from it, or how long it took to travel, you can figure out your origin time. So for instance, if we use this formula, P wave arrival time minus P wave travel time, in our case, our arrival time was 9.04. So you would write down 9.04.00. If you subtract your travel time from it, or how long it took the P wave to get there, that's right here, 8 minutes and 40 seconds. So then you have your 904 minus 8 minutes and 40 seconds. This is a little bit of a tricky part. Can you take 40 from 0? No, you can't. Can you take 8 from 4? Absolutely not. So you need to borrow from the hour sign. The 9 becomes an 8. But since you borrowed an hour, you need to add 60 minutes to this side. So basically, 60 minutes plus 4 minutes is now going to be 64 minutes. But you notice you cannot take 40 again from 0. So you need to borrow a minute from here. The 64 becomes a 63. You add 60 seconds because you borrowed a minute from this side. So this becomes a 60. 60 minus 40 is now 20. 63 minus 8 is, I'm not very good at math, so I'm going to do it over here. Which would be 57. 
That's not right. Sorry guys, my math skills are absolutely terrible. I wanted to just get a calculator or something. <laughs> 